Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're making over this old mantel clock here. I'm just going to open this up. Unfortunately the glass has long since broken and I'm just going to pry this up. There's just some little nails holding this on. I'll just try to carefully go around the edge and just loosen that up. What I'm using here is a staple puller. Unfortunately, I've got a little bit of damage here trying to scrape this up. So just try to do this as gently as you can. You can actually put down a piece of cardboard just so that you don't scratch the wood any further. Okay, so there, now I can give it a scuff sand. I think what I might end up doing also is trying to take off the hands of the clock. We'll see how complicated it is on the inside. Let's just take a look. Okay, it looks a little intimidating, but I can see here that there are just some screws holding it on. So in order to get down into the um, case here, I've got a really long extension on my screwdriver. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna magnetize the end so that when I undo these screws, I can just lift it out without losing them. So let's just remove this bit. Now when I go in and undo one of these screws, hopefully what happens is I'll be able to lift it right out. And there we go, it's on the end of the tip and I can remove it easily and it doesn't get lost or fall down. Just to let you know, this not only magnetizes your tips, but you can demagnetize it too. I'm not gonna do that now, but you have the option of magnetizing and then demagnetizing after in those different slotted areas. So this is a very useful tool to have and you're not gonna lose your screws. So whenever you're doing anything like this, you want to make note of the order and the parts that you're taking off. So I've got this little sort of nut here that just, whoa! <laughs> Hand should have come off first, lesson learned. Anyways, none the worse. They're off now. I can put those aside and I can lift out the inside. Now we can address the, uh, the case of the clock and just give this a good sand and then we'll get to priming and painting. In order to scuff sand into some of these contours here, here's one example of one of the concave tadpole contour sanding grips that I can use. And as you can see, it fits that concave surface pretty well. So I'm gonna take this out to the garage. So I just wanna show you this concave sanding pad here. I've got a sticky back sandpaper. I'm just gonna get a fresh area here. I'm just gonna stick that right into the crease. And then you can get that curved. Now, in order to get this, you just straighten it out. And you can get right into that corner and along the side too. So I've decided to paint a Union Jack onto the face of the clock and I've got the pattern here. What I've done is I've taken this paper notcher here and I've just notched out the edges. And then I also pierced all the intersections with an awl. The pattern is punched. I'm just gonna take this chalk pencil and I'm just gonna make dots at the intersections and notch out where the notches are. I'm gonna start with the center, which is gonna be red. So you can see the white chalk on the dark wood and I'm just gonna tape along the lines and paint the red cross. Now, unfortunately, um, this is not exactly centered to the clock. So it's gonna be a little bit off center, but there's not really much I can do about that. I'm gonna be using frog tape to tape along these lines. So I'm just gonna roll it out and cut my pieces. And I'm just taping along the outside of this line here. Then I'll just burnish it down. 
I'm going to continue taping and we're going to be back to paint the red stripe. The colors I'll be using on the clock are Barn Red, Bunker Hill Blue, and Fluff. I know that I've got the tape ready to go for at least the center cross. We can get going with our painting. And for that I'm going to be using my favorite mini angle brush and of course my mister. So let's set these two aside for now. Give this a shape. So I'm just going to give the bristles of my brush a light misting. And let's open up the red. And I'm just going to start offloading in the middle here. And then I'll work my way out to the sides. going to give my brush another mist. Don't worry if the paint is still a little sparse. I finished with some long strokes as best I could around all these obstructions. Um, we'll get the rest on the second coat. Before this dries completely, I'm just going to go ahead and lift the tape. And when you're peeling back the tape, you just want to go slow at a 45 degree angle so that you don't get any tear out. And there we go. First coat done. Now, as I mentioned, I probably should have painted white underneath here because I think I'm going to do the rest of these quadrants. I'm going to tape off the red. As soon as it dries tomorrow, I'm going to leave it 24 hours. Then I'll tape inside the lines. I'll paint my white and then I'll add the rest, the remaining colors, the red and the blue over that. And this will be the pattern we're going for. Before we move on to the next color on our Union Jack here, I just have a quick tip for you. I'm just going to apply dots to my next color so that I know exactly where it's supposed to be. Now as you can see I did write it in two, but it's just so much easier to see the color cues when you've actually got your color coding on your pattern. I'm going to bring back pieces of tape I've already used, but instead of using the side that I painted against, I'm going to use the other side because it's still perfectly good. So I'm just going to line up with the inside of that line and I'm going to lay the tape down right along that edge. And if you're seeing any red through, just try to move it over so you've got a nice clean edge there. And once again, you're going to burnish down. It's probably easier if I turn this around so I can see exactly where that line is. It's always about perspective. Whatever angle gives you the best view of what you've got to do is the one you should use. And again, burnish that edge down really, really well. So I'm gonna finish the rest off camera and then we're ready to paint once again. Right after taping and before you start painting, be sure to burnish the edges really well. And I know you're not gonna be able to see this because the chalk is um, really faint, but I taped outside of the chalk line so that when I paint, it's gonna cover that line up. So once again, I misted my paintbrush with just a little bit of water and I'm dipping into paint.
and I'm just going to finish off with long brush strokes just to clean that up. Now I'll come over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. This is just a little bit trickier because I've got this little bit of molding here. So I'm just going to dab into the edges and again finish up with longer brush strokes. Now this takes so very little paint. Just like I did with the first element that I did, this red cross here, I'm also going to do two coats. Now ideally I probably should have painted everything white first. Okay, so that's it for the first coat. I'm going to let that dry for 20 minutes or so, then I'm going to come back and do the second. But the next time we're back, um, I'm going to remove the tape, and then we're going to paint the white areas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the red, I'm going to paint everything white, and then all that's left to do is to mask off for the blue. So meet me right back here and we'll complete it. Chalk mineral paint takes very little time to dry. In 15 to 20 minutes you could be on to the next step. So I am going to peel this up and again you want to be sure that when you peel the tape you've got it at a 45 degree angle to prevent any tear out. So I'm just going to slowly and carefully lift this. Now once I get this all untaped what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up the red that I just painted and what I'll probably do is use a lower tack tape than what I've used here because this is still fairly fresh. It's same day. I painted this um, just about an hour ago for the last coat so it hasn't had a lot of time to dry and it's still a little delicate. So I'll go ahead and I'll use a lighter tack to cover the rest of this. Now of course if you want to wait until the next day or like even a few days if you're not in a rush you can of course continue to use the same tack tape without any problem. As a matter of fact, um, this center part, hopefully it's okay underneath once I peel it up, but I only just painted that yesterday. Now I don't want to peel the center because I'm still working and that's going to remain covered until the very end. So I'm going to go grab my low tack tape and then when we're back we're going to paint all the other areas white, let that dry and come back and do the blue and then we're going to be done. Now I have something special planned for these feet here which I'll show you um, at the very end. So here's a piece of low tack tape and what I'm going to do to tape off the red stripes that I just painted is just cut it right down through the middle. It really doesn't matter how neat you are with this part because this is just going to get overlapped. I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with this in just a moment. Now I'm going to take the straight edge, not the cut edge, and I'm going to line it up with the red. And again, burnish it down really, really well. I'll take the other side and do the same thing. Now this just happens to be a little bit too wide. So I'm going to have to trim this off because my stripe isn't quite as wide as the tape. So let's try this again. Okay, now I'm just going to bend this back on itself and cut this even with the end of my stripe here. a little short right here so I have to fill in that gap. But that's essentially all you do and then everywhere that's wood is going to become white. I've got the low tack tape over my red stripes and I'm just going to give my fluff a shake and then we're going to paint over all the areas that you see that are wood. Unfortunately my battery died before I could finish so I just wanted to tell you that I'm going to let this sit half an hour, do a second coat, then we're going to come back and do the blue. If I'm not overly happy with how the low tack tape has performed, I'll let this sit overnight and then I'll revert back to using the regular tape. The white paint is now dry and so I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the blue. So 
So because I'm on white now, I've switched over to a pencil and I'm just going to lightly mark my lines. So again, I'm bringing out the frog tape. Now I have no idea whether I have any bleed um, under the previous tape that I did, uh, which was a low tack tape. So since it's the next day, I'm switching back to the regular one. So when you place your tape, ensure that you can actually see your pencil line because you want to cover it up. You don't want it to be showing against the white. It's always a little trickier against this molding here. So just take your time and ensure that it's tight against that. And again, ensure that you're not covering up that pencil mark. Now just put a release cut on the back side of this tape here so that you can then continue your line here. Okay, so that's going to be our blue area. We can then take blue paint and fill that in. But before I do, I'm going to continue taping up so that I can do all the blue together. Now we're ready for blue. So I'm going to give my chalk paint a little bit of a shake here. I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush because this blue area is much smaller. So once again, I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm just going to give a slight mist, just a little bit damp. And let's go in with the blue. So again, finish off with long strokes. I'll offload mostly in the center. Work my way out to the edges. And then from the tape, I'm moving inwards. And again, I'll take some long strokes going with the grain. Now because this is going over white, it's going to need, I'd say at least two coats, maybe even three. I'm just going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing underneath this detail here. And again, just ensure that everything is well burnished around the molding so that it doesn't leak underneath. Okay, first coat is done. I'm going to let that dry for an hour and then I'm going to come back and do a second coat. Here's a second coat of blue done. I think it's looking pretty good, but I'm going to wait for it to dry and see if it needs a third coat. I'm going to call this done and so I think it's reveal time. So far so good. Let's see how some of this red is looking. Now the tape definitely isn't as crisp a line as the regular tape is. I did 
you get a little bit of leakage under here, I'm going to have to touch that up. And I did get some white there too. but all in all, it's looking pretty good. To touch up just a very few of these slight marks that I have and a little bit of bleed through, I'm using this Dixie Belle Fine Artist Brush and I'll just dip into the paint. I'm just gonna take the slightest amount onto the brush. Right here where it goes over the molding, I got just a touch of bleed through. So I'll just touch that up. Jack is complete, I'm going to paint the rest of the case with fluff. And I also have something special planned for the feet. I'm going to use some of this diamond mousse just on the feet here. Given that it's the Queen's Platinum Jubilee coming up in June, I'm going to be using this gemstone mousse in the color Diamond. I'm just using it on the feet, just for a little touch of sparkle. Look how beautiful that is. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in some of the products that we used, I'll leave links down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe. Join us again soon for another flip on the fly.